Hi everyone, I'm going to discuss natural language processing for massive online open courses as part of the research that we've been doing in my unit. There are two parts to this talk. First, I'm going to talk about FRED recommendation for instructors. This is the idea that in massive online open courses or MOOCs, we have very few instructors to very many students. And on the discussion forum, that can come at a big cost because there are too many discussion threads for an instructor to keep track of. Instead of worrying about just having the instructor scroll through all of the discussion forum threads, we'd like to be able to recommend which threads have the highest priority or most critical type of interventions that could help students most effectively. And this is joint work that we have done with collaborators at the University of Pittsburgh. We're going to start by looking at freely annotated data from MOOCs. Here's an example of a course discussion forum in Coursera. So you can see that there are several different threads in the discussion forum, but most importantly for us, in the discussion forum, it's marked uh, which ones have been replied to by staff. So we're going to take those threads as artificially labeled examples where the instructor staff has decided to intervene. So you can see all the ones that have a red underline constitute a positive example of what we'd like to train a machine learning classifier to indicate that this type of thread without the instructor's intervention, should actually be intervened. When we look at multiple courses, for example, in this slide, we have a couple different courses here. For example, machine learning. Uh, this is Andrew Ung's course on Coursera. This is its fifth iteration. And other ones, such as compilers, the fourth iteration, or game theory number two, uh, which is its first iteration, we can see that the intervention ratio or how many threads that the uh, instructor intervenes on over the total number of threads in the discussion forum varies quite a lot. And when we use this information as well as some natural language analysis on the discussion forums, we can come up with a predictive model for whether an instructor should intervene or not given all of the discussion posts all the way to the end, excluding the possible instructor intervention that might actually come up at the end. And developing such a model is pretty simple. And as a baseline, we can develop such a model and find that actually our predictive models vary quite a lot in their possibility of detecting intervention. Here we're looking at F1 scores, which are a balance between precision and recall. But we can see a very major problem is that there's very wide variance in the performance. We have some courses which get very little predictive power, like 14 or 0%, and some other ones, like Andrew Ung's machine learning course, where we get much better prediction performance, almost 60%. We think this is in part due to the intervention ratio differences. You can see that certain courses with very little intervention, for example, only 2% of the threads in compilers and 1% of the threads in music production were intervened on. And these courses have accordingly much lower prediction performance. Secondly, we find that more data helps. This is in contrast to much of the previous work, which looked at only individual courses in publishing work. When we try to generalize this model over all of the different courses, we saw that prediction varies very much. But taking all of these courses together, where we have a larger test set with over 14 different MOOCs, we are aggregating data across all courses, then performance improves. You can see here that the average weighted macro improves a slight bit, but on average for individual instructor interventions, the prediction goes up about 4% on average. 
we think this is partly due to the fact that different professors have different style of intervention. For example, here we have Professor A, who prefers to intervene on the discussion forum as often as possible. This is because he might feel that it's important to engage the students to correct misconceptions that they might come across when discussing by themselves. In contrast, Professor B has a completely different style of intervention. She may prefer not to intervene and feel that the discussion forum is really a student's province. The students should be using the discussion forum for peer learning because oftentimes we find that as instructors, when we intervene, all discussion between peers stop because the professor has given a definitive or model answer. There's no point in debating whatever the professor has provided after that, and it discourages peers from learning from each other. In our research, we have found that there are several different pieces of evidence that need to be taken into account to predict instructor intervention better. For example, we have found that the forum type encodes a lot of information about whether instructors should, should actually intervene or not. This is probably not too surprising. On the left-hand side, we see the intervention ratio on average for different types of discussion forums. As you might predict, things like an exam discussion forum or correction to slides and other information in textbooks are regarded as fairly important. Especially timely discussion forums like exams are often intervened on. In contrast, things like homework, which is usually done by peers and students on their own, is an area where instructors prefer to let the students figure it out on their own. And we can see this as part of the intervene and non-intervene counts for those same discussion forums. Even though there are lots and lots of discussion threads in a homework discussion forum, much fewer of them are intervened as indicated by the ratio of the green to the red crosshatch. In contrast, in discussion forums for exams, again, there's almost a 50-50 ratio about whether the exams will be intervened the discussion forums, threads on examinations will be intervened. We have found that discourse cues such as agreements, affirmations, appreciations are also really good signals for intervention. On the left side of the screen, you can see a screenshot of some of the posts that are happening in a discussion thread. We can see that the original poster has indicated certain words like naive, confused, and should I. These by themselves don't indicate that the discussion thread needs to be intervened on, but when taken into consideration with discourse connectives like but, this indicates a very strong signal to our discourse model that an intervention needs to take place. So these types of contrastive discourse cues along with general vocabulary indicating confusion, can indicate that there needs to be an instructor intervention. In fact, here, the instructor does eventually intervene, and is, this becomes a case of a positive example. Another question we'd like to ask ourselves is whether there is bias induced by the user interface presentation of a discussion forum. For example, in this screenshot of a Coursera discussion forum, the first thread here, which is on sectional quiz two, happens to be the most recent thread that was updated uh, by a post in that thread, and is therefore shown first on the discussion forum. Might the order of presentation of the threads on the discussion forum have any type of correlation of whether a instructor intervenes on the discussion thread? In fact, the answer is a definite yes. Here we can see a plot of the frequency of intervention on the y-axis by instructors against the rank of the thread in the user interface on the x-axis. For example, here, threads that were intervened at the first rank constitutes the most likely case, whereas threads intervened on at the second 
third, fourth, and so on, right, tends to have a decreasing level of frequency of intervention. You can see this pattern fits a very nice log normal curve. In fact, 43% of the interventions occur at the first rank, and 85% of the interventions occur within the first 10 ranks. The first 10 ranks are usually commonly displayed in the first page of an interface. So only 15% of the interventions by instructors happen on the second or further down in the presentation. In fact, modeling position helps a lot. We can see here in this slide that the performance is enhanced overall by almost 15%, just by adding one feature that indicates the position of the discussion thread. Fortunately, with this model, we can also debias our prediction, meaning we can take position out of consideration and try to predict intervention with a discussion thread without noticing where it is occurring. Doing this allows us to find threads that are worthy of intervention without accounting for position bias. And in fact, in our studies, we have found quite a number of cases where instructors have failed to intervene on where there's actually a very good reason for intervening. In fact, what we're going to do in the remainder of this project is to try to discover effective intervention patterns in MOOC forums. To do this, we have to build a corpus of interventions, but specifically label them. Labeling them will help us decide whether the interventions are just timely and urgent, or whether they present a very crucial learning opportunity for the instructor to help the students reflect better on their learning experience. By modeling the interventions, we can predict where interventions should occur and help to improve the building of the corpus. In fact, our project is coming close to a close at this point, as we are close to the end of year three, and we have already done full-scale annotations of crowdsourced cases where we ask Amazon Mechanical Turk workers to annotate threads. This actually is a very, very difficult task. and We've had many iterations, as we had expected, to improve the annotation guideline so that novices can actually do this at scale. Our annotation guide is based on transactivity. Transactivity just means basically that different stakeholders within a discussion forum are building on evidence that has already been laid down by prior discussions. For example, we can have discussion forum threads that indicate a feedback request, a paraphrase, or some type of justification request. We are using all of these categories in our simplified transactive statement taxonomy to annotate. On this particular project, we're coming close to a close and we are going to apply what we have created in our predictive model to help on local courses. We are building an interface so that IVLE and Luminous can be used as a test bed where our intervention model can read the discussion forums and predict for the instructor's use which discussion forums need to be intervened on. Now let me discuss the second half of the talk. This will go a bit faster. This is on cross-linking MOOC resources. That is the automatic hyperlinking of discussion forums to this uh, class resources mentioned by the original posters. This is joint work with the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. Let's look at the case of the discussion forum again, but from a different perspective. Here we see two different posts within the same thread, where an asker or original poster is asking about question nine of assignment two, and somebody else has answered later that they might want to refer to lecture 2.5. In fact, both of these underlined phrases here in blue are references to specific learning resources within the course. And although in a discussion forum, you can introduce hyperlinks, most of us won't do so. It's just too tedious. For example, to put the underlined uh, hyperlink to lecture 2.5, 
I would have to actually find a video in the page, copy the URL, and then add the hyperlink when I'm writing the post. But we can certainly do this automatically. If we can add a hyperlink to question nine of assignment two, that would point to directly to the problem and for lecture 2.5 to point to the video, this would help better cross-link those resources such that any subsequent reader or poster can reference the original material quickly. We've introduced a framework called MIR. MIR stands for MOOC Uniform Identifier for Learning Resources. It's named after John Muir, the American naturalist, who noticed that many elements in nature are interlinked together. We'd like to do the same for the discussion forum. The idea behind this is that mentions like lecture 2.5 should go to the actual resource. We want to do this in a transparent fashion, such that when we introduce the hyperlink, it will have a semantic representation similar to the one below where it's instantly recognizable that it goes to a particular type of resource. What do we mean by resource types or learning resources? Well, we surveyed 29 different global MOOC platforms and we standardized the resources that we could find in these MOOCs into seven specific types. So for example, on the URL that we just saw, videos, constitutes one of these seven types. For example, on Coursera, we crawled 142 courses with over 100,000 posts and 11,000 different instances of learning resources. We use this as our testbed for the subsequent experiments. We have created simple proof of concepts for both mention extraction and mere search. For example, using a simple regular expression such as keyword plus number we can capture things like lecture 2.5. Looking over our corpus of over 100,000 posts, we find that 18% of them have mentions. So actually trying to interlink resources seems to be a pretty important feature. Of those, our simple method doesn't work particularly well. It captures only 2.6 of dimensions, but those mentions are actually correctly extracted. In our second component, we've devised a way of doing mere search. The idea behind this is to generate a transparent URL and then resolve dimension to its actual component. We're going to do this by introducing extra context from the embedded web page. For example, a mention like 2.5 by itself doesn't help us resolve which video needs to be hyperlinked unless we know which course in which week we're referring to. Using this simple method, we're able to resolve 55% of dimensions accurately. And this is out of an upper bound of 81% of dimensions because there are quite a lot of other problems that happen to make it difficult to resolve a mention. For example, ambiguity. If I have a mention like question free, but that week happens to have several different quizzes, all of which have a question free, it's ambiguous which quiz is being mentioned. We've come to the end of my talk. Today, we've talked about discussion forums and using natural language to explore them and exploit all of their resources. And we've had a lot of interest from Tsinghua's Xuetang X, CMU's LearnSphere, and UK's FutureLearn. I'd like to thank my collaborators from CDTL, the Provost Office, University of Pittsburgh, University of Alberta, and University of Science Technology in China. Thank you.